Hi, I'm Garrett with AM Solar, and this is Cody. And uh, if you've seen MTV's show Pimp My Ride, we're doing something similar this week. Uh, this Lance trailer belongs to our bookkeeper, Lisa. She's been with us for eight and a half years. She's on vacation, and uh, we have the keys. So we're gonna solarize this RV. Cody, what are we putting on this thing? We're gonna do a 200 amp hour lithium battery and monitoring system. Uh, we're going to put in an 18 amp Orion DC to DC charger for the alternator. We're going to install a 2000 watt inverter, 80 amp charging capability, and 400 watts of solar with room for expansion. She's gonna love it. Indeed. So I'm here with Nicholas on the roof of Lisa's RV where we are installing two 200 watt solar panels with room to add four more. So it looks like we're gonna have one right there and the other one going to be right here. Uh, Nicholas, where are we putting the other two panels in case she decides she needs to expand? Uh, the other two panels would go on this side right behind the uh, reefer vent Okay. and then in the rear uh, above the uh, um, the vent over there, um, just to the uh, driver's side of the ladder. So the panels are going to be connected in parallel and feed into this combiner box. So we've knocked out one, two, three, is there any more holes? Are we, oh, four holes knocked out. So solar panel leads are going to go into two of those holes and then we will just have pigtails popping out of the other two holes that will make future expansion easier. Uh, why do you do that instead of just leaving the other two holes not knocked out? Well, um, it makes it a lot more easier for the consumer if they decide to do it themselves in the future, or if they bring it back to us, uh, we can just... Um, just knocking out those holes is kind of hard when it's already... Um, yeah, so um, we... You can knock them out or you can drill them out. Um, when it's on the roof, um, especially a rubber roof, because um, the rubber's a bit more sensitive, um, you won't want, it, you won't want the, the box to um, damage the roof or possibly come up while oh, you're Oh, that makes it sense. Out. So if you're hammering on the side, yeah, you don't want that to or, rip or this material. Or if you're material drilling and you, and you mess up, you won't want to damage the roof. Okay. Here's a close up look at the wire that we have coming off of the panels. This is AM Solar's custom 10-2 roof wire. And we have that feeding to the panel. Uh, the other lead shows it better. So we have our MC4 type connectors being spliced on to this 10-2 roof cable. And then the end of the roof cable feeds in here with strain reliefs. The red cable goes to the red bus bar, the black to the black, make it real simple that way. And then they get fed down here. And I believe these are four gauge cables to oh, now allow for enough current to flow down to a uh, disconnect switch and then to the charge control. So you've installed the mount feet and on our normal mount feet, when we're working with like uh, metal or um, fiberglass. We just used the 3M VHB tape, but you've got screws in here. Why do we have screws on these mount feet? Yeah, so this is a, a rubber roof. Um, if we just use the 3M tape, um, it would stick as well as the rubber roof. As you can see here on the edges, it's a bit loose. Yeah. Um, the other thing is um, it would uh, expand and contract more. Um, rendering 3M tape might um, uh, not stick. You know, it, it might, would it just, might unstick from that. It would just um, pull the rubber right yeah, off of the um, wooden material that's yep, underneath. Um, and so what I've got here is I've got, um, I used a, a very small uh, pre-drill bit in order for the- So our mount feet come with two holes in the bottom of them. Yep. You get them stuck on the roof with the VHB tape yep. to make sure it's in the right location. And then right in the middle of that, you do a small pilot hole. Yep, small pilot hole. Um, I use the I use a drill bit um, in order for the wood not to uh, to come up. Uh -huh. um, so you keep it nice and flat. Um, and then I'll-, I'll it looks like you added a little bit of sealant in there before yes, you screwed yeah. down. Okay. Uh, add a little bit of sealant, um, stainless steel screws, um, 
make sure your roof is thick enough. Mm -hmm. um, if it's too thin, yeah, you'll so have your, to your screws it. have some purchase yeah. so you can grab yep. onto something. And then once this is all done, you've got all the feet in the right location, then you completely bury the whole base of this foot in sealant again. So the yes. screw heads are covered, this metal's covered, and you just have a big blob basically, do a neat job of it, and then the metal part's sticking out through that. Yep. All right, so let's talk about the placement of the combiner box. We like to put it in an area where we can go down into the rig, ideally through some wall or behind some cabinet. And one thing you'll notice is there's a slide out right here. So it would be a real bad idea to put this right here, right on the slide out wall because uh, your wires would get in the way of the slide out. But uh, tell me what you did uh, on the roof side of routing these cables. Did you just find the location and just make a pilot hole and drill in? How do you go about doing that? So um, we look at the roof and inside the rig um, we'll look for areas where we can get from the roof all the way to um, to the floor uh -huh. um, depending on where our route is in the layout um, we found uh, a nice soffit inside that went all the way through the floor which is exactly what we needed and then we would drill a pilot bit um, from from the inside of the rig to the so outside you, of the rig. So you drill from the bottom up. Yep. Um, and then you get this little tiny drill bit poking up through the, the rubber material here. Yep. Okay. Um, and then uh, we check it again uh, and make sure everything looks good. And then we'll take a uh, corresponding uh, hole saw size. So in this case, we used uh, four two. So we used a seven eighth uh, hole saw. And then um, what we would do, because of it's a, because it's a rubber roof, before you start to drill your hole, you go in reverse um, with the hole saw as to not grab the rubber and rip it. So that just cuts it yes. without yeah. grabbing it's it. Going okay. in reverse with the hole saw. That's a good pro yeah. tip. So you cut the rubber, you pull that part off, and then you drill through that first layer of wood, pull that plug out, yep. any wires. You know, sometimes people will have lights or communication wires running through their roof. Yeah. So you gotta do one layer at a time, pull it out, make sure there's no wires, then go into the next layer, then the next layer, and then you're through. About how deep did you have to go? Uh, this is a Four Seasons rated trailer, so it's probably got some insulation. How deep did you have to go before you were free and clear through the roof there. Um, well, we actually had to drill from both sides on this one. Uh -huh. um, I had to go probably about two inches, uh, size of the, the hole saw. Uh -huh. um, this type of insulation, it was um, it was dense, uh, all the way, the insulation from ceiling to ceiling, ceiling mm -hmm. roof. Um, and then we would, we went uh, from bottom to right where our uh, pilot bit was initially. Okay. Um, so it was, you know, about three inches or so. Okay. Of uh, dense insulation. So I'm inside the RV with Nicholas and uh, you can see that the slide out is coming in here and we've got this perfect wooden column, basically hollow column from the floor to the ceiling. So it's very obvious where the combiner box goes in this installation. So uh, I'm guessing you, remove something how did you yeah, get so, to this to ceiling here so we've got these little caps here that just pop off okay so you were able to just take area. that wooden thing completely off yep we just unscrewed this on both sides pulled it out um there's other wires going up into the roof um spread out so we, and we could follow them make sure okay um, they're out of the way we made our own hole separate uh -huh. from those um, so we just pre-drilled, um, or, uh, send out a pilot hole, um, through the roof. So, and then you fed the wire up through the roof. Yeah. So once we got our hole drilled out, we, we fed it up through the roof and there's, there's, um, studs in here, little, uh, you can see these cabinets, there's uh -huh. separate, um, levels. Uh, we would just, we just cut a little hole uh -huh. to feed our, our, um, cable with loom through mm -hmm. um, and fed it down into the uh, so it goes all the way down into the space under the floor yep okay and 
and I, I see this conduit is that covering that wire is that yep. what that is yep. okay that's what that is and then we've got it secured throughout the soffit okay so when customers buy kits from us they get 30 feet of that wire um and they so they would just start inside go up and then take the other end and then go down how did you do that what length of wire did you guys just guess like ah, oh, maybe this is 16 feet or whatever well how did you decide to do that before you cut the wire yep so um we measured from the roof um all the way down to um underneath the rig mm -hmm. uh, where the, the floor is and then up to the front where our system is going um and we measured it about 22 feet okay um and that is with about about a foot above the uh the roof um allowing you for room to work with your cable when you do your c-box okay sounds great then the next step would be to put the gray tape that comes with our combiner box all around this uh inside there between the wire and the roof and that makes a watertight barrier basically so that when you fill this pocket with sealant the sealant doesn't drip down into your rig it just stays right there and makes a good seal and along with that you apply sealant all the way around the perimeter of the combiner box so everything is perfectly watertight so we have cables running inside the wall from the top all the way down to here and they pop out under the rig right there you can see that conduit and then the conduit goes and runs along here it will eventually go into this compartment in the front where we have the lithium battery, the solar charge controller, the disconnect switch, the breakers, the inverter charger, and the DC-DC charger for alternator charging. Hey Nicholas, is this done yet? I do get a lunch break, okay? That's true, well, uh, okay. So we have the combiner box all finished. Nicholas is getting ready to put the lid on. You can see our four pigtails for two panels with the option to do two extras. And he didn't mess up the polarity. Red's going to red, black's going to black. He's got all his screws. Good job. Here's the mount feet after the sealant has been applied. Uh, don't expect yours to look as nice as this. Uh, these guys have had a lot of practice. Last time I did it, I got it all over my shoes. This is a work of art right here. And uh, we also did the roof attachment points. They've got a little bit of sealant underneath them and uh, that holds the cable nicely. For an extra level of weather protection, uh, we put a little bit more sealant around those, those roof attachment points. Look at this guy. Like he's a cake decorator. Brilliant. Then on the uh, on the zip ties that are exposed to the sun, uh -huh. we like to put a little bit yeah. of sealant over them um, to protect them from the UV. Nice work. So when we left off, we talked about how cables were routed uh, from the solar combiner box down the wall and then into this compartment here. Those cables come up right here and the positive goes to a disconnect switch. So this separates the charger, ch the charge controller from the solar panels and the negative just goes right into the PV input of the charge controller. So we have a 50 amp charge controller that can work with uh, four of those uh, 200 watt solar panels. Coming out of the charge controller, the negative goes down. We have a junction post under this and directly to the battery terminal to the negative there. Uh, this system's unique in that we don't have a shunt based battery monitor and that's because we just have a single life blue lithium battery that has built in Bluetooth monitoring already so it saves some cost there. 
On the positive side, it goes to this breaker and this breaker turns off uh, power from the battery to the charge controller coming off the breaker. It goes to the positive terminal of the battery. It actually goes to a junction post into the positive terminal of the battery. And you can see there's a couple different um, leads coming off of this one post on the breaker. And instead of using bus bars, like here's all your positive leads, here's all your negative leads, we save space and sometimes we'll put a couple lugs on there, like it's the same node as the battery. So you could just put your lugs on that. For the inverter portion of this installation, uh, we needed to tap into the shore power line, which comes in on this corner, over here but our battery bay and inverter are way over here so the easiest way to do that was to interrupt where the shore power line came into this ac box so we took the wire that came into the ac box from the shore power line and rerouted it to this box which we call a baby box and then on the we spliced it into our 10-3 cable right here, which we ran back down over this way, down under the floor, and then to the front of the trailer there. And then from the inverter output, we ran another route back through that hole and then back to feed the AC panel there. So shore power connects right here from there. It goes down under the rig to the breaker box where the refrigerator was. And then after that wire route I just described, it comes up from under the rig into another baby box with a 30 amp breaker on it. So this is your main AC input uh, disconnect breaker. From there, it goes to a Victron Multi Plus 2000. And then the output of that gets routed back down there, back in under the kitchen, and then to the AC panel where it supplies all the AC loads. So this inverter, it takes power from the batteries or it takes shore power and it supplies the main AC panel just as if you were plugged into shore power. So to get DC battery power to the inverter, we have power coming off of the positive here it goes to a master disconnect switch. Then it goes to an inverter disconnect switch. Then to a 300 amp fuse down and to the DC input of the inverter. For the negative side, comes off the battery terminal here to the input of the inverter. With a lot of our systems, we use a digital multi-control to control the inverter. But on this one, we use a smart dongle. So you can see you open up the Victron Connect app, you log into it with Bluetooth on your smartphone, and you can see the status of the inverter. It's inverting. You can change it. From, it's on right now. You click on that. You could turn it off, charger only, inverter only. Click OK there. And you can also set the incoming current limit by clicking on that. And it's set to 30 amps. If you were to plug into like your friend's uh, Christmas lights outlet on the side of his house, you might dial that down to 15 amps to keep from popping a breaker. But uh, very simple to use right here. Also on this app, you can access the solar charge controller. We were just on the uh, inverter, so let's look at the solar charge controller. Connecting. It's a pin number to log in. All right, so not now. All right, it's kind of an overcast day here. We're getting 37 watts. Uh, battery bank voltage is 13.4 solar array is about 19 it's in bulk mode which means it's sending it everything it's got uh, we recently drained the batteries a little bit playing with some of the loads so everything's working like it should when you work with lithium batteries it's sometimes important to add a device that 
uh, keeps current from flowing from your lithium battery into your tow vehicle. So this is the seven pin connector on Lisa's RV. This is pin number one, this is the ground, and this is pin number four, that's the positive 12 volts. Uh, so we, need, we went inside the rig and routed that to a Victron Orion DC-DC charger, 18 amp. So to get the wire from the seven pin harness, uh, we accessed it underneath the rig and we took the positive, that number four pin, it goes up into here on the input. Uh, the number one pin is the negative and we connect that to the negative here, which just goes to that uh, negative junction post we have under here. And then the positive output, it goes to a breaker and then it goes on to the batteries. So that keeps the higher voltage lithium battery from dumping into your lower voltage starter battery. And it also provides a nice 18 amps of charge when you're driving. So to verify that everything works, our inverter is on. We are not plugged into shore power. We're just sitting in the AM solar parking lot. Let's turn on this microwave. Would you look at that? No smoke, no fires, everything works. Love it. All right, Lisa, while you were on vacation, we solarized your RV. Uh, we put 400 watts of solar on the roof, a 2,000 volt amp inverter, and lithium batteries. Let's go inside, see if this thing actually works. Fantastic. All right, so as you notice, we weren't plugged in. Check this out, this is my quick. What do you think? Wow, it actually works. Heck yeah. Good job, guys. There's your keys. <laughs>